make a whole cake every hour. Keep that still good and easy all the time, time, time. Keep that still good and easy all the time. Welcome everybody to my kitchen. Uh, it's time again for a, another menu that we're going to cook. And uh, today is uh, going to be vegetarian. We're going to cook uh, one of my favorite recipes that Chris always fixed in Switzerland already. It's a casserole, butternut squash, rotinis. Okay, here we go with the ingredients. Um, for, this, for, this, for this recipe, what we, what we need, this, this, this is for the tomato salad. So we're going, we're going to have a few tomatoes and um, we're going to need some basil for that. We're going to have some tomato salad with it. But for the main course, we need uh, blue cheese crumbles. And you know, if you don't like blue cheese, you don't have to put them in, but we put them on top, some Parmesan and some sage. Cream, a pound of noodles. We don't know if we're gonna need all of it. And a butternut squash. Some pepper and, you know, of course, our usual suspects, mm -hmm. uh, some salt, don't need too much of that. A, a, lem a lemon, um, uh, we need a little bit of lemon juice, and of course, olive oil. There's different ways of doing this. You know, sometimes we peel the, the, the butternut squash before and sometimes after. But this time we're just going to need some uh, wheels that we're going to cut from it. And I'm just going to cut right through. I'm just going to make the wheels about two centimeters, about three quarter of an inch thick. A thumb. You know, like that, something like that. And then, that looks good. What a nice squash. Once you have a wheel, you know, you can sort of just cut around it like that with a knife. And that's, that's fairly easy to peel. Um, just have to be careful, you know, with squash. You can so easily, you know, cut yourself in the fingers, you know, when you take the entire squash. Happened to me, so I'm <laughs> trying to be careful with it. Are you taking the, the, the seeds out? Yes, I'm taking the seeds out. I'm just taking a spoon and I'm just going around with the spoon like this. And then just pop it right out like this. And that's that's enough. That's good. You. About like that. Yeah, like that or a little smaller, you know. However, mm -hmm. that's good. So what I do is uh, take a little bit of lemon juice, take about a half a lemon, and just squeeze it over in here. So I can sort of, you know, mix it up with a little bit of lemon juice. Yeah. So what I'm doing is, you know, I, I also, I got some lemon on here. Uh, just, it gives such a great flavor to the butternut squash. And now I'm gonna uh, drizzle some some olive oil over it. And oh, hey, can you put some salt over mm -hmm. here? You know, I put some salt. Okay, this is, this, I think this looks pretty good. Mm. Not a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, yeah, just put some salt. Okay, good, good, like good, that, good, huh? good, 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 very good. And you know, I know it, it's, it's, you know, people would maybe not do that, but I, you know, I like to just to sort of mix it. That's the way to do it. Just mix it up like that. Get everything nicely coated. Yes, you know, with the olive oil and a little bit of the lemon juice. And then sort of lay it out flat. Lay it out flat, wash my hands. <laughs> okay, uh, the butternut squash by itself, you know, would take 30 to 40 minutes, you know, at uh, 400 uh, degrees. And, um, you know, so it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take longer as the cooked noodles, you know. So what uh, we're gonna do is we're gonna put the, um, how do you call it, a tray? What is this? Yeah, the roasting. The, the, the roasting pan. The pan, yeah, we put that in the oven now um, before we do anything else. And I put it around 350 and just let it go, you know, for a while. So it's a little bit already, you know, getting to the softer side when we put the noodles in and everything. Mm. Something? Yeah, I would love to play something, but okay. I, just, I think I need to change the strings first. Why? They're kind of, they're kind of dead. And Why? Uh, yeah. They're dead. They're dead. I like the like fresh set of strings. My guitar. So it's going to be a couple of minutes. What kind of strings are you going to put on there? I think I'm just going to put the, the twelves on there. Some GHS. Some GHS. Yeah. Yeah. You 
know what? I put new strings on this morning. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> The, the strings on. I don't let, let me put some of the water for you in the teens. Mm. I put some water in here and uh, a little bit of salt. I'm just gonna put it on the top. This uh, this is doing this doing its thing down Natural here. Natural thing to change strings in the kitchen. We used to do that way back then too. And we remember when we were street musicians and. And we could afford a new set of strings. You'd put that on the guitar or the banjo, and it would be such a beautiful thing. And then you go out and play, and two hours later, you bust your first. Oh God! <laughs> you remember the time when you always busted your G string uh, uh, on, on that on the oh, saddle there, oh, D yeah. and G and D string. Well, uh, it would always bust it up because it was had a rough edge on it. Yeah. I remember the first time my uh, my got my first banjo. Uh, it was a very inexpensive Japanese banjo, but it was. That was the best thing that could ever happen to me. And I think I was 10 years old, and um, my mother bought these instruments for Uwe with the, with the money she earned as a kindergarten teacher. She saved up some money and she bought Uwe a guitar and she bought a banjo for me. Um, and then so I went into town and I had practiced chords on the banjo on, from a chord chart on a neck that we had, but no banjo really. So. Um, I couldn't wait to get get the banjo. We got home, and and we tuned the banjo up. And we had a little tuning pitch pipe, and uh, I tuned it up. And it was a tenor banjo. And this this first string is a is a high A note up here on it. On and the string busted. And it was it was Saturday, so there was no way that I could get another string. So I had to wait till Monday to get the string. So what we did, you know, we tried to tie it together and it wouldn't last, it wouldn't hold, you know, I was frustrated. And then on Monday we got another string and then we drove home. And it was the time, you know, when you go to a music store and you buy one string. And then we got home and it was a ukulele banjo string. It was only this long. It didn't even reach up to the deck to the pegger. So we had to drive all the way to town again and get an appropriate long string. Um, the, then I put that on a banjo, so about Tuesday I was ready to play. And uh, I think on Saturday we were at our first show <laughs> because uh, I had practiced all these, you know, the, the basic chords. And we, you know, we always played music when we were children. And, uh, so I could strum the basic chords and we were in a ski lodge. And then so we played our first show, it's a, it's a big word, just the first tunes, you know, for people. And uh, there was a a Swiss, uh, what was it? A, you know, it's just a Swiss yodeling band, you know, a folk band, uh, playing in that ski lodge. And the, we, we stood in front of all these people and playing, Stag Lee, I think it was, or something. And the bass player Tom, stopped. Tom Dooley, we played Tom Dooley. Yeah. We did Tom Dooley, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, um, the bass player snuck up from behind us of that band and started playing with us. And so on our first show, we were already a trio with banjo, guitar, and bass. <laughs> I remember how our dad used to change the strings on his guitar. That was before Christmas. He would get a, get a new set of, of strings and it would take forever to change them with the slung headstock and everything. It was a really thing. And then, yeah, I and then by, by spring, those strings started to to tarnish, uh, we get really worn out over the frets, and and uh, by the end, by the end of the year, some of the strings were tied together with knots. Yeah, especially <laughs> you know, if he, uh, our father, did he have the which guitar was it? Was it our mother's guitar that had actually a floating bridge? And that was my mom's guitar, but my dad's guitar had a had a, just a, a straight bridge that, but it didn't have any pins in it. It's just like a classical guitar yeah, bridge. Right. But our mother, I remember. If the, if the string would break behind, yeah. you know, you would pull it back and you may tie a knot 
you know, in the morning, and, and so you tie the string back there. So we used to do that on the streets as well. So, so we never cut off the strings at the head start. No. You use everything that you had. Yeah, you roll them tightly up and nicely and neatly, and then you would, so you could extend them again, you know, and tie them together. Yeah. And nowadays we're spoiled. So really spoiled. We can get these wonderful strings here in America. Oh, you remember about strings, you know, when we, there was a, there was a, a company for a while in the early 80s, I think, or late 70s, they, they made what they called Nashville Straits. They said, well, if you roll up a string, there's tension in it, and it's not good for the sound. <laughs> yep. So they had a pack, you know, as long as the string. <laughs> and there were six strings in there, in a pack, you know, so this, this long, so the string, the string is straight, not rolled up. And oh, it ordered them. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we waited Forever. for two months for the strings to come. And he put the strings on, I mean, he, he ran downtown, he got the strings, and you know, and of course it's always the check-in time. You order something from America, like a fifth string peg or something, and it would take two months for it to arrive. And they would never, you know, maybe they call you, maybe not, but so you, you try to call them up and then they wouldn't pick up the phone. So you run down to the music store, which is maybe a half hour or an hour away, and then you, uh, you ask, is, did it come today? I said, no, sorry, and so you run home. And so, so one day Uwe came home, and he came home, he had, this, he had the strings with him, long pack of strings, and he put them on his guitar, and he tightened it up, and the, the G string on the D string, you know, he put it, while, while putting the string up, it broke. Can you imagine? That was bad. I mean, it, it, leaves, a, it leaves an impression on you, you know? Now, now, Melissa, you see, this is how I roll these strings up. And then I've got to put them in a box, and this is what Deb Goodman uses for her for her jewelry and for her ornaments and everything that she does. You know, this kind of my old strings. I play them, I play music with them, and then they get recycled. Okay, uh, water is nicely boiling. We're gonna put the noodles in, and like I like I said last time, you don't uh, actually have to wait for the water to cook. You can put the noodles in while the water is still cold. Uh, because these are dry noodles, it really doesn't matter. But now I know it takes about 10 minutes for them to be fine. So I just can look at my clock and say, okay, 10 past 12 is when I'm gonna take them out. They're pretty much, you know, I don't have to check them for a while. It's all good.
That's my favorite stuff, sage. Fresh sage, if you have uh, only dried, that is just as good. Not, as, not quite as good as this, but uh, you can use dried sage as well. Um, or take off like the toughest stems, and then the rest just cut it, uh, cut it up a little bit. Looks good a little bit. Perfect. Oh, it's fine. It's like good. that. Yeah, it's, it's, the, good. it's good. It's good. It's, it's already good. Uh -huh. It's already good. It's good. Not too fine. It's good. Yes, yeah, not too fine. It's perfect. Uh, Let's good. prepare a little bit of this. Uh, <laughs> uh, what we're gonna put into the noodles. So the calorie counter is going up right now. Is immensely. Immensely. <laughs> yes. But, but this, this is. <laughs> Put some cream in here and uh, some cheese, right? Yeah. Some you got some Parmesan here, nice uh, Italian Parmesan. And you know, we never really, I don't know. I, we don't measure. We don't measure that much. It's uh, what you got on hand. You know, it can be more, it can be less. What do you put in for, for spices? Actually, I, I like to put pepper in it. Can you put some in here? And I'll get some salt. Yeah, I'll get some salt. Some salt. I know uh, here in America, we use a lot of uh, pre, pre milled pepper. Oh, that's fine. That's, that's good, but if, if you get yourself a pepper mill, make sure that it has a Peugeot <laughs> thing in here. Uh, there's there's a there's a lot of different brands out there, but the Peugeots from from France they're they're not too expensive, and they work forever, and they're really going to give you a good grade. Also put some salt in here, not too much because we got the cheese, yeah. but we need some salt. We really do. Yeah. Fresh strings in the morning. It sounds like a piano. It really does. Because I think the noodles are done. Really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So noodles are perfect. Wonderful. Wonderful. And now we don't have to work, hurry up with the, you know, with the, with the noodles. They're done, so they can, can also cool a little bit. They're fine. Just let them, just let them sit for a while. We have a special taster in our kitchen to make sure that everything is up to specs. And this is my little Nino. Oh. <laughs> Oh, baby, baby. 
soft now but it looks actually very good ah I see ah it's perfect it's got some bite but it's still don't burn yourself mm, it's perfect it's got a little it's still got good good enough bite it's not it's not too soft it's perfect take it out put it on here now it's time to mix it all together and Uwe, I need Uwe's help mm -hmm. so what we need to do is you know take the squash and um, This here is just be careful not to burn yourself, really. So put some of these noodles in here. Maybe not a, not maybe not all the noodles. Just you know, part of it. Mm. Ah well, it looks like it's looked like this. Might, might as well. Might as well. Let's put them all in. It all looks good. I'm sorry. Take these. Put them in here. And now. I have to try for just a mix it up. Smile so Yeah, it's fine. Looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. And now even with that a little bit, right? Yeah, and then we're gonna pour pour uh, the cream and the cheese in here. So it gets everywhere. Yes. I got the blue cheese. Oh, I got the blue cheese. Yep. Because I'm just in the original here. Yeah, I'm just in the original here. Yeah, I'm just in the original here. Yeah, I'm just in the original here. Yeah. The heat will do the rest of the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll soak it up. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, mm -hmm. the, the blue cheese crumbles on top. Sage. Now Jens uses a mixture of gorgonzola and regular blue cheese. Yeah, you can, you know, whatever you got in the, in the refrigerator left over from making salads yeah. or whatever. Yeah, blue cheese is, is just a little sharper than gorgonzola. Mm -hmm. And so it's a little, um, so I, I did sort of a mixture, I think. Mm -hmm. But every, anything, anything, you know, blue cheese. Just the taste of the squash with the blue cheese and the sage is just heavenly. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have never tried this, it's definitely good. So I'm just going to put it right back into the oven. You're going to leave it at 350? Leave it at 350 oh. and just put it in there. And all we have to do now is just uh, clean up. Clean up. <laughs> and, and just check check on the squash. Once the, once the squash is starting to get, get nice and soft, I'm going to put it on broil for just a second, just to give it a little bit of a crust on top, and then we're done. The tomatoes for the salad. Stems out, and Jens wants half slices. Tomato salad, it's nothing special, you know, because uh, uh, just tomatoes, I, I really love that. We can put the, the, the basil in and just throw it in there. And uh, I put some uh, balsamic vinegar in here. This is white, but I, you know, we, we, you know, I use, a lot of times I use the, the red one. And then some olive oil. And uh, 
Now I'm going to put a little bit of aromat in here because I just like the taste of it. And some, some salt. This is some herb salt that we use. This is actually really great stuff. It's got a lot of herbs in it that really taste fantastic on anything. And put some on there. I think that's it. Yes, you, you don't mix the salad sauce before. You always no, do it like that. Just throw it right together like that. Stir it up a little bit. You got all of that too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Smells good. Mm -hmm. You don't put any of this in there, right? No, no, no. This stuff belongs to the salad. Stuff. So, I... so this is it. Now we have time again, Uwe. Yep, oh. What are we gonna do with all the time we got? Well, what can we do? <laughs> As you found out by now, I suppose, you found out we're not real chefs, but we <laughs> love to cook. <laughs> and it's just a great time to spend, you know, with family and friends, you know, or just, you know, your partner, you know, be in the kitchen and, and cook. Um, it's beautiful, you know, it's just a really relaxing time. Oh, some pepper over there, put some pepper in there. I like pepper. Yes, 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 yes. But, and we appreciate your comments. And uh, we actually got quite a few emails of people, you know, sending us pictures or telling us that they tried some of our recipes. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we love it. Thank you. People have been asking what I'm drinking here, and I can show you the, the bottle for those who know. But the thing is, I don't actually drink it. This, uh, this is just water. And uh, this is just here for show. Check that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
fingers are greasy. <laughs> That's gonna get greasy. My fingers are all greasy. Not to wash my banjo. Mmm. <laughs> looks good, huh? It looks good. Mm. Okay, it's time. You know, I like I said, I'm not absolutely sure how long it's gonna take me. You know, for them to. To be well done, to be done, you know. And the thing we're watching is only the only the butternut squash, not not the noodles. They they're fine anyway. Uh, so I just take a knife, you know, and just sort of cut into them and see, you know, if it yeah. And it looks like I'm gonna try one. Mm, actually, it's getting to be really good. So what I need to do is I'm gonna go and put it on broil. I'm turn this off here. Just. Figure out how to stop. Put on broil. Start. Yes, high broil because I want a little bit of that on the top, you know. So, fine. Um, so, I can take it out. Wow, it's hot. Whoa. All right. Perfect. Looks fine. That's good enough. Just looks like it always did. This is just, it smells good. Oh, it? I remember first coming to your house uh, when Krista started making this. Uh, so you put this right in the... In yeah, the yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Look at this. Mm. Oops. Always. You can always just start with a little and then... Can you know? No, 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 no. I think that's enough. Mm -hmm. So, and then a little tomato salad with Yes, it? and we, you know, I like to actually put the tomato salad right, right into my plate. But I think this is, this is, this is good for Melissa. What do you think, Melissa? Yum. I try this creation. Yes. It smells very good. Mmm. <laughs> that is very good. Okay. I'm going to try something I've never eaten before. Butternut squash. It's hot. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Not too bad. Mm. <laughs> what do we say in Swiss, Swiss German? En gute Miteinander. I'm going to tomato salad. Yes. Okay. Which I don't eat tomatoes. Yes. But you I'm going to try it. You don't eat the tomatoes. I uh, eat them on pizza and spaghetti sauce. And, in, and in our kitchen. And in your kitchen. Well, you don't have to. I'm sorry. No, it's this. fine. It's wonderful. This is about broadening our horizons, right? No, it's good. That's pretty good, especially with that balsamic vinegar. Good. Y'all need to try this. There we go. That was um, what we in Switzerland uh, uh, called the Chürbis Uflauf. Chürbis means, you know, pumpkin. Uflauf means when you put it together with noodles and cream and cheese and all yeah. that. So Chürbis Uflauf, this is what we used to used to call it. Yeah, we, in English you could probably say uh, um, um, a pumpkin gratin. I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> we, we're looking forward to eat now because we're hungry. Oh, yes. <laughs> you all take Thank care. You. Stay safe. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.